Don't go out there with your shirt off. Don't go out there. I mean, there's the, you know, alcohol can only fuel but so much. So you got to take some personal responsibility on this situation. I can't put this on 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 the Chiefs or anybody else. You got to take some personal responsibility for your own health, your own care. Greetings and salutations and welcome to the Odd Coaches Podcast. I am your host, Dr. Keith Adams, and with us today for our Top Shelf Tuesday as NFL free agency begins, Captain for Life and Caleb Williams, agent and advocate, Will Cotton. Will, how you doing today, buddy? I'm great. Finding the balance. That's all I'm trying to do, man. So, you know, I'm trying to bring the balance to the Odd Coaches Podcast. Product placement and academic and athletic advisor. Great book for the CKA Save Project. George Ocker. George, free agency starts this week. How we doing, man? And I can see why he was your favorite player. God, dog. <laughs> Captain for life, baby. For Let's go. Life. All right. And oh. in segment one. We're just going to give you guys an overview of free agency so you know what to look for. Segment two, we're going to talk about the franchise tag and the transition tag. And in segment three, we're just going to try to put all of this together for you. But first, free agency begins Wednesday. Players are either restricted free agents or unrestricted free agents. The league year begins and players, uh, you now will have freedom of movement. The salary cap, fellas, will be over $255 million. Teams will need to be in compliance with the salary cap this coming Wednesday. So with that being said, the first player I kind of want to talk about is Russell Wilson because he's the number one guy I'm looking at this week. So, fans, Russell Wilson's 35. He has made some money in the NFL. He's won a Super Bowl. Uh, But for the last couple of years, he hadn't looked very good. And he's visiting with Pittsburgh, the New York Giants, uh, and I believe he's also going to visit the Las Vegas Raiders. Fellas, you had a chance to take a look at Russ's situation as we start free agency, and he's one of the big names, starting with George. George, tell me what you think is going to happen with Russell Wilson. He's gonna be the starting quarterback for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Um, and it and Pittsburgh's gonna get a steal because Russ played good last year. Um, we got he was the quarterback that uh that uh the new coach uh, the um new Sean coach Payton. Sean Payton did not want in Denver. It, he didn't didn't fit, you know, and, and this and it makes me think with Payton, damn good coach, but is his system, you know, Russ is not going to be Drew Brees. And he couldn't, could he not see past the field beyond him that he just needs a Drew Brees prototype? No, he just didn't want Russ there because Russ played good last year. And any interesting thing is there's a lot, there's a number of players Brees didn't, I mean, that uh, Peyton didn't want because uh, Jerry Judy's gone all, already. And, it, and, and free agent ain't even, free agency hasn't even started. So, <laughs> I'm going to tell you this, Pittsburgh is going to be back in the mix next year with Russ at quarterback because he's got some time. He's got some some tread left on those tires. Um, and if I was Pittsburgh, I'd pick up Russ and then draft my next quarterback uh, in, this, in, this, in this year's draft because there's a there's a plethora of them. So I just draft because the ones we got on staff, I, I can't – the ones they got on contract right now, just they ain't the future. So right. I just I drive my my future quarterback this year and put keep Russ there and let him go until he can't go no more. So, well, what do you think about Russell Wilson, man? Uh, I'd like like George said. I mean, Pittsburgh is the way to go. Denver is paying his salary this year, so it's going to cost um, Pittsburgh maybe like a million. I think minimum is like one point two million dollars moving forward. That's good enough for me. And if you think about it, two years, even if they pl- even if he plays next year, that's an average of what like $17 million for a really good quarterback with a mm-hmm. team that has a really good amount of talent. I mean, they have a pretty good defense. They have some good skill, uh, skill positions. 
The offensive is okay. I think everybody looked at them. They almost made the playoffs. I think a lot of people looked at them and said they were a quarterback away from being into the playoffs. Um, it's, you know, it's low risk for Pittsburgh. I'll tell you one thing. The only reason he's checking out the Giants to get a free dinner. I, you know, the only reason he going to Las Vegas is to get take his wife out to a nice show and maybe a nice dinner. He ain't going to no bum teams. He's going back go to Pittsburgh, player. Come on, man. It's not sexy. I know it's 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 a it's a city that he's not really used to. You know what I'm saying? But I think he'll win, and they could even get a chance to bring it back next year and pay another thirty million dollars. So. I think it's a great pickup for them. Just don't go to no Giants. Don't go to Las Vegas. <laughs> don't do it. Hey, go get a nice dinner. Visit. Be nice. Be kind. But hey, take a little bit hey, over to Pittsburgh. Hey, he he's in hey he he's in church every Sunday. He ain't going to Las Vegas. He getting too much. No, ain't no way. Nope, no, no. Hey, no, hey no, can no. we talk? Hey, before we move on, can we talk about how dumb the, now how dumb Denver looks for doing the trade? <laughs> And how much money they lost right now. I, I God, Lee. And Sutton. they're going to trade Sutton. They're going to trade Sutton, yeah. too. Yeah. Trade Sean, Sutton. Sean Payton just cost you over 100 and, what, $50 million? It ain't his right? money. It ain't his he, money. Hey, he acting like he acting like he's 45. That man, yeah. like he, <laughs> he ain't got that much time, dog. I know. I know. <laughs> dog. All right. Oh. In segment two, we're going to introduce the franchise tag to you and the transition tag. And I'm going to share some people I'm going to follow <laughs> this week with free agency. We'll be right back on the I Coaches podcast. <clears throat> The reviews are in for Dr. Keith Adams' book, Finding the Balance, My Personal Journey to Academic and Athletic Success. College professor and student-athlete academic expert Dr. Lisa Rubin said, There is nothing out there like this book, so I do hope people will pay attention and give it a read. Former George Mason standout Fowler and Campbell said, Consider this book an opportunity to work directly with Dr. Adams just like I did. I assure you that there will be something you can take away that will be useful to you throughout your personal journey. Ryan Waite, a recent college graduate who is a software engineer, said, I like how the book is based on research, which makes it good for general students as well as student athletes. The book serves as both a memoir to Dr. Adams' 30-year academic and athletic career, as well as an instructional guide to assist student athletes, parents, coaches, teachers, and administrators navigate through the challenges of finding a better balance between academic and athletic success. The book includes over 15 personal stories and anecdotes from Dr. Adams, along with numerous former players and colleagues from a variety of sports and endeavors. You can order your copy at www.ckasaveproject.org. From the main page, simply click CKA Save Project Services and order the Find the Balance book. For more information, contact Dr. Keith Adams by email at cka at cka.saveproject.org. All right, we're just following up with Russell Wilson in segment two. Let's tell you what a franchise player is, folks. A club can designate one franchise player and one transition player among its veteran free agents. The salary offered by a player's club determination, whether the franchise player is designated, is exclusive or non-exclusive. An exclusive franchise player, not free to sign with another club, is offered the greater of the average of the top five salaries in a player's position for the current year as of the end of the restricted free agent signing period. So again, when you franchise tag somebody, it's like the average of the top five players. And that's why players tend not to like that franchise players of note, Cincinnati's franchise T Higgins wide receiver, the Colts have franchised Michael Pittman wide receiver and Jacksonville uh, franchise Josh Allen, who's a linebacker. In terms of the transition player, the transition player is offered the greater of the average of the top 10 prior year salaries at the position using the same methodology as the franchise player. Uh, only one player, to my knowledge, has been franchised. New England Patriots as franchise safety Kyle Duggar. Uh, players um, and, and panel. Is there anybody you are following in free agency and will feel free to bring Caleb up because teams are making decisions <laughs> so they can possibly get him. So, Will, I'm going to have you go first, sir. Uh, I'm going to leave Caleb Williams. Uh, you know, he already making millions. He's not even in the league yet. So I'm going to leave him alone right now. 
But there is an interesting in, um, situation, uh, T. Higgins. Now, T. Higgins was, uh, he was coming up pretty well. He had back-to-back 1,000 uh, yards. Um, and then he didn't really have a good season last year. I mean, I think it was very underwhelming. I think he had under, uh, like, he had under 50 receptions. He had under 700 yards, and he had five touchdowns. Now, yeah. this is going to work for him because ain't nobody going to pay T. Higgins $20 million annually. Now, if they franchise him, which they're going to do, he's going to make about $20 million, $21 million, and has the opportunity with a quarterback that he's used to, with a system that he's used to, that will give him an opportunity to make the money a long-term contract. So I don't think that's a bad uh, situation for him. Because one, I don't think there's too many organizations that are going to give him twenty million dollars annually. Uh, this would be a good chunk of chain, and this would be a good chance for him to actually get back to those numbers. I think he's going to be somebody that you're going to be looking at, uh, whether he hits it or he not. That's kind of up to him. Um, there's some other players, you know. I mean, like you said, uh, Josh Allen. I mean, that kid's been balling. I mean, you know, again, you're going to make more money based on what you did. Um, and gives you a chance to really ball. Same with uh, Michael Pittman. I mean, he didn't have a great season last year. I mean, they had a bad quarterback. Richardson got hurt. Um, they became a really run-focused kind of team. So these tags are actually people like, oh, well, this is you're, you're handcuffing these teams. This is getting these guys to pay, get paid, and work in a system that they're used to to get a chance to get a bigger pay, uh, to get a big salary next year. So that T. Higgins... Don't be upset that you that you took your, your franchise and you didn't get a joint. This is because if I'm paying you based on what you played last year, you ain't getting twenty million dollars a year. You ain't getting eighteen million dollars a year. You know you played pretty bad, so I think it works for some of them. Um, you know, and they made a lot of guys go. I mean, there was a lot of guys in Buffalo. They let guys that they were like, man, well, yeah, yeah. And, and this, I don't really know what Buffalo's doing. I don't know if they want to rebuild or if they want to go big on time for for for, for their team. But long story short, uh, I think T. Higgins is going to be one uh, player that I'm going to be focusing on. Um, he's he's playing for money. He got to get the bag, and to get the bag, he can't show who he was last year. So that's that's what I'm interested in, really. George, this week, who are you thinking about, buddy? Unlike my esteemed colleague, um, I am paying attention to T. Higgins because they got him. They got him on franchise tag right now, and and well, how he's supposed to put up any numbers when you got uh, Keith Adams as starting quarterback last year? <laughs> I mean, yeah, they they went through the cavalcade of, uh, of quarterbacks right and left after Burrow got hurt. They you, and I think if. They do not want Higgins to hit the market because I I believe Higgins would get that would get that money if he hit the market. Um, he did have some oh yeah, yeah. Too. yeah. So <laughs> but, yeah, but it's also but I, it's also you know it's a it's a safe bet. I mean, it's a safe bet for him. You get twenty million dollars. You get a quarterback that you know a system that you know a pretty. I mean, Joe Burrow. I mean, uh, he's he's good. The ball, the ball. I, you know, it's hard for me to. You know, it's a it's a smart it's a smart bet for him. That's yeah, because I because I, I tell you this: if you don't pay him, somebody else will. And right mm-hmm. now, and right now with Higgins, actually they have him under the tag right now, but they're they're negotiating long term contract with him, which means they they'll should. have which means they'll have him and uh and uh and um and uh, the other Chase. one locked JC yeah, Chase locked up for the next couple of years. Mm-hmm. Um, so that is so th- 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 that's big right there. I think that the um safety from Kansas City. Is going to be interesting one because I think Kansas City gave gave him the um, the uh, right to go s- search out with other teams. So yeah, and the Snead. and the Snead. and Snead yep. played such a big role in that defense and that in that Super Bowl run. It was going to be interesting to see what the money looks like and how he comes back. He might be one of those ones that's the casualty of the cap because a lot of a lot of play, a lot of teams are going to be you know I don't I can't pay you this amount of money whatever and it's going to look like you know it's going to be one of those situations where he's going to be like well i might as Kansas city might be the best bet for me so we'll see what happens all right for me folks and this is just quick bullet points one i'm looking at kirk cousins because long time listeners of the show will know he's my hero because that guy has made the most 
And I love, I love when you make the most doing the least. I'm looking at Derrick Henry and Saquon Barkley because last summer we talked a lot about running backs and how undervalued they are, and they will continue to be undervalued, but these guys can still play. I'm looking at the Raiders and whatever they do because, unfortunately, they've drawn attention to themselves. And instead of just being quiet, trying to build a little team and get better, you want to talk You want to talk about making Patrick Mahone rules and things like that. So I'm looking at that. I'm looking at Carolina. Did they pick wrong? Did they pick the wrong guy to lead their team in terms no. of being quarterback? Or did they pick the wrong coach? So let's see what moves they make. Local to us, shout out to Brian Bobian. The Washington Commanders, this is your first shot at a rebuild. And will you bobble it? I kind of think they're going to bobble it. And finally for me, the Los Angeles Chargers, Jim Harbaugh got the money, got the power, and he's already talking about trading the Bosa kid. <laughs> He's coming out of the box saying, I don't want any of you. So I'm curious to see what the Chargers would do. But with that, when we get back, does the NFL have a responsibility to its people? Because the headline last week said amputations. We'll tell you about that when we get right back on the I Coaches podcast. Why should student athletes use the CKA Save Project Academic and Athletic Consulting Services? Over the past 15 to 20 years, colleges, universities, professional sports teams, business organizations, and others have increased their use of consulting services to improve their decision-making processes and results. Over the same time, the athletic and academic landscape has changed for high school and college student athletes as the NCAA has raised initial academic eligibility requirements for student athletes while decreasing the number of transfer restrictions. Former college student athletes have noted that they were academic and athletically unprepared for the rigors of college. Let the CKA Save Projects close to 30 years of academic and athletic experience help guide student athletes to increase success as we work to help student athletes achieve the goal of obtaining a college degree. For more information, contact Dr. Keith Adams by email at cka at cka.saveproject.org. Welcome back to the I, I Coaches Podcast in segment three. Die hard fans. Some people who attended the record cold Kansas City Chiefs playoff game in January had to undergo amputations after suffering frostbite, according to a Missouri hospital last week. Research Medical Center didn't provide the exact numbers, but in a statement that that said it treated dozens of people who had experienced frostbite during the 11 day cold snap during that time period. 12 of those people, including some who were at the game had to undergo amputations involving mostly fingers and toes. George, you're an athletic director. You have power in terms of making recommendations for where the game should start, continue. What are you thinking when you see this headline in these notes, man? You people are stupid. <laughs> I mean, let's go. You knew, the, and they're crying about the Buffalo game got moved. The Buffalo game got moved because there was like three feet of snow out there and they couldn't get it mo- out in time. It was a it was a 12 game, it was a 12 day cold spurt. You knew it was cold outside. You mm-hmm. knew the risk. You had an option to go or not to go. But we wanted to be part of Chiefs Nation. So if you go out there and be part of Chiefs Nation, don't go out there with one pair of socks. Don't go out there with your shirt off. Don't go out there. I mean, there's the, you know, alcohol can only fuel but so much. So you got to take some personal responsibility on this situation. I can't put this on 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 the Chiefs or anybody else. You got to take some personal responsibility for your own health, your own care. Go see, <laughs> see, make it to halftime, then go home. Is it that important to see Taylor Swift sit in the box? Oh, I mean, I mean, come on, man, <laughs> come on, come on, man. Come okay, on. No, no. Come William on, man. Cott, you're the fan now. You have oh, been it- the games. This gonna be worse. Go ahead. Me, Will. 
You got people fingers and toes getting amputated. Shouldn't the league have like not even played that? Talk to me, Will. Kill him, no, Will. no, because the NFL loves it. How many shots did we see at the Kansas City game? Bama no shirt off. Bama got flexing. Uh -huh. Jason Kelsey. That's Bama right. Shirt off. Ah, beer. They love it. They love it. They love it. And for people even, look, and I'll tell you right now, William Cotton, I'm not going to an outdoor game right. outside of maybe uh, November, mid-November. I ain't going. No. That's right. All these, oh man, look, all this archaic idea of, you know, remember that they had the NFL music, they'd be like, oh, it's uh, the snow, and the, you know, all, all the drama and everything. That stuff is done, man. I don't want to hear nothing. If you, if, and first of all, if you, if it's 11 day cold snap, you're going to say the game? Like, bro. That's right. That's right. Come on, man. Like, <laughs> Thank you. come on. Uh, it, it's silly, man. It's silly. Well, They're looking for a reason. The frozen tundra. Y'all got one of the oldest stadiums in the That's world. Right. That's right. 1950 Solid. something. That's and right. Talking about it's cold. Get it. Get, get dome. You, but right. I don't want to hear nothing. I see so many Bamas with no shirt off. That's Thank right. God none of our people. We saw all, you know, not with the shirt off and the beer and I'm not cold and I love it. Yeah, right. and, but, I mean, look at people, Buffalo. That's they right. break each other through tables <laughs> That's right. in the parking lot. I don't care what y'all complain about and talk about I'm hurt and all this stuff. Y'all crazy with this NFL stuff. Yeah, and that's not even I I didn't wear I'm cold because I didn't wear gloves. You ain't even with the jacket. We talking about yeah. gloves. You know what I'm saying? Look, I ain't trying to hear that stuff, man. Uh, donate your toe or your finger <laughs> to the to the team. I mean, you can't go can't do that's, right. that's right. That's right. Uh, so. That's right. <laughs> so to close out, fans, the NFL is big business. According to CBS. And the NFL, CBS and sports coverage of Super Bowl, uh, was that 53? <laughs> Looking at my Roman numerals, which featured yep. the Kansas City Chiefs uh, defeating the San Francisco 49ers, delivered the most watched telecast in history with 123.4 million average viewers across all platforms, including CBS, Paramount Plus, which I actually have. Uh, <laughs> Thanks, Sportsline. Nickelodeon, Univision, CBS Sport, NFL Digital Properties, including NFL Plus. It's not going to get smaller. So this is just a reminder of how big that the NFL is, that not only are people going in person losing limbs, but everybody's watching on all platforms. So... Yeah, it's not going away. It's year-round coverage, and the NFL is big business. So on behalf of our Cavalcade of Stars, I'm Dr. Keith Adams saying thank you for listening and or watching the Odd Coaches Podcast, and we will see you on the sidelines. Until next time, take care. The Odd Coaches Podcast is sponsored by the CKA Save Project. The CKA Save Project is an industry leader in providing student-athlete academic and athletic support. From assessing student-athletes' academic and athletic skills to measuring and monitoring student-athlete academic progress to improving student-athlete time management and organizational skills, the CKA SAVE Project provides wraparound services for student-athletes from middle school through college. For more information, visit us on the web at www.ckasaveproject.org or schedule a free consultation with Dr. Keith Adams by emailing cka at ckasaveproject.org. We hope you enjoyed today's show. The Odd Coaches Podcast drops new episodes every Tuesday through Friday on most weeks. Make sure you subscribe to the Odd Coaches Podcast on Apple Music, iHeartRadio, Podbean, Spotify, and YouTube. Follow the Odd Coaches Podcast on Twitter and Instagram at Odd Coaches. Follow Dr. Adams on Twitter and Instagram at CKA Save Project. In addition, follow Coach Mike Francis on Twitter and Instagram at Coach Franchise, spelled Coach F R A N C H I Z E. For more information about the CKA Save Project, please visit them on the web at www.cka.saveproject.org. See you next time on the Odd Coaches Podcast.